Uh, let me know when you're ready. Allow? Yeah. You're recording? Let me know when you're ready. Oh, I'm ready. All right, we're ready to go? Oh, I'm ready to go. Are you ready to go? Yeah, I'm recording. Are you recording? Are you recording? Yeah. All right. I'm recording. And now... We about to build a roof off of this bitch. Bitch. It's time for the Wiener Shake Show. Wiener Shakers. Wiener, Wiener, Wiener Shakers. Bonsoir. 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 Oh, that's damn good, baby. To get all calls, text 302 729 Now, Greg Weeder and Imran Shade. Greg Weeder, welcome to your live... That's right, Greg Weeder. It's your 48th birthday. 45th. And here... Whatever. And here on the Greg Weeder Show, we're celebrating with It's Your Life. Oh, boy. Uh, you, should, you, should, you should insert some audience laughter and applause there. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for teaching me. No, thank you, Greg Weeder, for being alive, you big healthy Jew. Now, here on It's Your Life, we're going to take oh, a trip down memory, <laughs> memory lane. Mm -hmm. And uh, explore your illustrious Jewish past. Are you ready, Greg Weeder? I don't know if I'm ready or not. All right, Greg, we give it a hand, everybody, for Greg Weeder. You should insult, uh, uh, insert some. Uh, I'm going to insult somebody in a minute. Yeah. Okay, Greg Weeder. Here's a voice from your past. Uh, 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 here's a voice from your past. Take a listen and see if you can recognize. Who it is? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Greg Weiner. Uh, yeah, he's a, he's a good he's a good fella. He's a good fella, but he's a uh, kind of a bit of a cacksucker. But uh, but uh, you know, I really love him, and uh, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. Greg Weiner, do you recognize that voice? No, I don't. <laughs> Think long and hard, Greg Weiner. Voice, tell us a little something about yourself and how you know Greg Weiner. Yeah, 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 he's a, he's a little bit of a cocksucker, you know. And uh, oh, Jesus. Uh, back back when he was a little uh, little figure, <laughs> we uh, we used to party around, and we were uh, we were good chums. And uh, you know, uh, let me just say this: stick ball, you little cocksucker. Greg Weiner, does that ring a bell to you? No, it does not. Stick ball. <laughs> stick ball. You're a real great a cocksucker, Greg. If you don't remember that, I mean, we spent our childhoods playing stickball in the in the backyard in Brooklyn and uh, <laughs> kick, kicking that little uh, ball around with that stick we found yeah. down by the, the Navy yard there, you little cocksucker. <laughs> is, is this actually from a movie? Because um, I never grew up in Brooklyn. Yeah, you did, Greg Weeder. Okay. Welcome okay. to Joe... Joe, the truck driver from your past, who is a childhood friend of yours when you grew up huh. uh, in uh, that town from a tree grows in Brooklyn. Go ahead, <laughs> Joe, the truck driver. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what you remember and love and cherish the most about our man of the hour, whose 58th birthday it is, Greg Weiner. 45. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm a little disappointed that uh, Greg didn't uh, remember me. Uh, mm. That's that's a little messed up, I gotta say. But, uh, you know, we can look past that because he's a little bit of a keck sicker, as we all know. <laughs> I right. just wanted to remind you of that time. Me and me, you and the neighborhood kids, all Jewish, of course. Right. Uh, and we were we were running around and with our little yarmulkes and pay, pay, paces, whatever the, whatever they're called. I can forget it. <laughs> payas. Payas. I never wore payas or knew anybody who had payas. Go ahead. And then uh, yeah, you did. Don't, don't be a little <laughs> kick sick. Guy. Go, shut up, Greg. Let the man talk. Uh, and so, 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 so uh, we we used to we used to run around like little kick and, and then uh, yeah. you know we would we. 
were playing the stick ball, and uh, one time I remember there was a girl, uh, you know, she was a Gentile, and uh, she came, she had red hair, flown, flown red hair, and we uh, we all followed her down the street, and uh, and uh, just 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 ogled her, you know, like a bunch of little cacksickers, and uh, it was a lot of fun. We remember that day fondly. Okay, yeah, that was great, Greg. Yeah. Do you remember that day? Of course, yeah. That was a great day where we ogled the uh, Shiksa girl. Yeah, yeah, that's great, mm. Greg. What a what a funny mm. uh, look back in time for Greg Wiener. Joe, the truck driver. Why don't you have a seat while we listen in on the next voice from from uh, from Greg Greg's past? Uh, oh God, I can't wait. All right, <laughs> let's let's mm. listen in. Mm. Maybe maybe you should insert some audience hushing. You know, gasping here. Sure, sure, sure. Is this thing on? No, Wait, what's going on? Am I supposed to talk into this thing? Jesus fucking what the, what am I? What am I supposed to talk? What? In the in here? What am I supposed to say? Hi, Anton. I don't know, I, I don't know what this guy is supposed to who, who said that? Uh, who it's, said Anton? It's your nephew, I don't Greg. Understand. All right, little technical difficulties there. But, Greg, do you recognize that voice? Yeah, that, that would be my Aunt Tom. Oh, uh, think long and hard now, Greg. Okay. Make yeah, sure that, you get it right. Pretty sure it's Aunt Tom. She's transitioning into being a woman. In her late 70s. And Tom. That's my final answer, sir. <laughs> Don't call me sir, Greg. I work for a living. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Uh, uh, voice, reveal who you are. I still don't understand what I'm doing here. They told me that there would be free food. Oh, and, geez. uh, well, oh, oh, shit. Greg. Hi, Aunt what Tom. The, can you, t- uh, hi, Greg. How you yeah, doing? Good. You how are great. you? What do, what's go what's going on here, Greg? They told me to fly out here to this this asshole's apartment. <laughs> it's my birthday, Aunt Tom, but you never remember. Who's, who's You've never actually who's remembered. Mine. Your nephew. Today. Today's your birthday, Greg Greg of Yeah, to today, September third. Yeah. Wow, okay. So yeah, you're a big boy. Well how how old are you now? Uh uh twenty two, twenty three? <laughs> Forty five, Aunt Tom. Forty five. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you're old, Greg. Wow. Well, I did. And, wow. Yikes. Yikes. And you are so connected to the family that you, you don't even know how old your nephew is. That's rough. You don't look good for 45, pal, right. let me tell you. Okay. Uh, anyway, listen, I got, I, I got stuff to do. Aunt Tom's a busy, busy woman, and uh, I got to make sure uh, things are happening. Right. Do you need anything else from me or what? No, please go. No, Aunt Tom. Uh, uh, I think we're all good here. Uh, thank you for coming in and helping us celebrate Greg Wiener's birthday. I still don't know it's his birthday, but okay, if you say it, it is. We I just guess, said it whatever. was my birthday, Aunt Tom. What the fuck? Okay, yeah. Well, let's not let's not curse, Greg. Not very becoming of a forty-five-year-old man. All right. <laughs> Okay, well, you have fun in your little show there, Greg. <laughs> uh, and uh, and uh, Aunt Tom signed it off. Oh, okay. What a shame. Right. Well, how do I get out? Where's the exit? Did I, and am I going to get paid for this? Okay, thank you, Aunt Tom, for your lovely contribution for Ge- Greg's past here. Uh, all right, wait, we've got another voice oh, to boy. help celebrate Greg Wiener's 52nd birthday. 45. Here we go. 45. Can you get that right? Maybe once since you're, this is my life host, whatever your name is. I'm 45. Li- my name is actually Life Host. That's Life Host. Yeah, no, I figured. So, so Greg, yeah. uh, here we go with, the other, with another voice. Take a listen. Hello. I just wanted to get on here and uh, uh, wish Greg Wieda a happy birthday. And Tom, and, is that uh, you again? Uh, no, no, I, I'm not Aunt Tom. It's a completely different voice. Maybe if you had some, uh, 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 there's a nuance, nuance, uh, different, different nuance in in this in my voice. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, but Greg, I just wanted to uh, remind you of the, the all the times. We had uh, my, I guess, my key word here for you, Greg, to help you jog your memory. Uh-huh. The to- the Torah. I knew huh? it. It's my rabbi. Huh? Huh? It's, it's it's Rabbi Levenstein, right? That's right, Greg. Oh my God! You got something right in fifty-four years of life, <laughs> after all, <laughs> Rabbi Levenstein. Come on out and show yourself to Greg Weider. You know, uh, uh, Mr. Life Host, you don't really host many other... This is your first real big-time gig, huh? 
We're here to celebrate your birthday, not explore my life. Okay, <laughs> Rabbi Levenstein, Stein, whatever. Come on out and greet the birthday man. Boy, not boy. He's, he's a man now. He's a foot. He's kind of beyond man at this point. We're tripping into old man. Come on out, Rabbi Levenstein, Stein, whatever. What is he, behind a curtain? Where is he coming out from? You got walls set up in there, uh, life, Mr. Life Host? Okay, Greg, <laughs> why, let's not break K-Fob, all right? Okay, here K-Fob? We go. Well, Greg, uh, it's good to see you. It oh, is Rabbi, Rabbi Levenstein. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 I'm gra- glad you uh, you remembered me, and uh, I just wanted to say congratulations on living so long. I tell you, me, at the rabbinical school, uh, we 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 didn't think you'd get past 32. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. Why is that, Rabbi? Uh, because of your penis thing. The the, pros- the pr- prosthetic problems with the stones. I I didn't. We didn't think. Uh, we didn't think you meant. Oh, That's- okay, Rabbi Levenstein. Thanks for showing up. I, I, are you okay with that though, Greg? Yes. Are you still, are you still uh, okay. shooting them stones no. at your 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 schwanz, Greg? Okay, Rabbi Levenstein. We can. We can move on here a little bit. All right, Greg. We gotta. It's disgusting. Okay, here we go. Here's another oh. voice from your past, wow. Greg Raynard. Listen up. <laughs> okay, man. Hey, hey, Greg. It's your boy. Uh, here's my key word for you, Greg. Rasta. Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> you really <laughs> dug deep there, huh, uh, mystery guest? Yeah, he's uh, he's a, a terrible, uh, stereotypical Jamaican, probably drug dealer or reggae musician. Yeah. Th- that's right, Greg. <laughs> it's the terrible, stereotypical representation of a Jamaican man from some episode in the show. Welcome, <laughs> stereotypical Jamaican man. Oh, hey, hey. Bubble Cloud, hey Greg, I'm glad to be here, man, to celebrate your birthday. Hey, hey, okay. Do you want to smoke some reefer, man? No, I gave that up, but thank you, Rastafari. No. You, you gave it up? Oh, that's that is uh, alien. That's an alien concept to me, man, because I am a Rastafarian mm-hmm. and I I smoke reefer all the time. I also am extremely homophobic, but we don't have to get into that, man. Jesus, where did that come from? Why are you so, Why are you homophobic, Rastafari? Well, it's a known thing in the Rastafari culture, Greg. Homophobia oh. is is pretty extreme. Is it really? I didn't know this. It is. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right, stereotypical Jamaican man. Anything else? You a story you want to share about your connection with Greg Weider? Yeah, man. I just wanted to say it was great being on that show that one time for a whole two minutes uh, and repre- misrepresenting my people. Thank you, Greg, for that opportunity. All right. Wow. Uh, You're welcome. Uh, Thanks for coming back, I think. No, thank you, Mon. Oh, thank you, Mon. Oh, no, Greg, that's something only my people can say. You can't (laughs) say that word. Yeah. Yeah, All right, Greg. Let's not be racist. No, sorry about Uh, that. Sorry about that. It's okay. (laughs) All right. I... I (laughs) I don't know who, who I, I don't know who said that one. Who, who was that? Was that yeah. Life House? It's not easy, is it? <laughs> Stereotypical Jamaican. I don't I don't know. We we both said it at the same time. Obvi. Here we go. Here's another oh. voice from your past. Wow. Greg Wayner. Where's that up? Here's a little hint for you, Greg. Mm-hmm. He's having a little vocal difficulty. Take a listen. Oh no! This is son of Stephen Hawking. I know it is. I can I can hear the laughter. <laughs> a long time ago, oh. I was given the opportunity to meet one Greg Wiener, and it struck me that as I study the stars and all that is beautiful in the heavens, that there are creatures made from that star stuff. And it is possible for people to be as beautiful as those stars. When I met Greg Wiener, I realized that that was bullshit. And Greg is a filthy Jew. Oh, oh, okay. All right, son of Stephen. Bye, son of Stephen. 
We get, I just want to say that Greg Wiener is a piece of shit. Jesus you, oh, okay, Christ. All right. Uh, it's my birthday, right. son of Steven. Fuck you. I wish this day never <laughs> happened. Oh, oh, okay. All right. Well, that's that was a fun little. Can you ask why Stephen Hawking hates me specifically so much? Let's keep this upbeat and moving along. Mm. No, no. Right. I would like a second chance to reclaim my presence here. Oh, okay, I think that's only fair. Go ahead, tell us. <laughs> I just wanted to say, Greg, that you are a capable, beyond capable person, and what you bring to the world is valuable, and all the people in your life that are connected to you are happy for it. You provide a service in your light, in your aura, in your charisma, that brings joy and happiness to everyone you touch. I'm waiting for the the uh, yeah. I'm wa- I'm waiting for the uh, the insult. I am not. I am not done yet. I didn't there think is so. More. Oh, all right. Here we go. Go ahead. I just want. By the way, Greg, do you yeah. know who this misery caller is? Yeah, well, he's not so much a caller. Uh, this is your life host. He's uh, a guest. Potato, potato. And yeah, uh, he's obviously the son of Stephen Hawking, right? This is your life host? That's right. Uh, okay. Son of Stephen Hawking, please go ahead. Thank you for letting me continue, life host. Right. When you touch people, it's like the ripples of a lake. When you drop a stone in it. Oh, wait a second. Dropping a stone did I trigger your memories of your fucked up PP? Oh, okay, all right, okay, thank you. Thank you, son of Stephen Hawking, for that lovely, we can all agree, lovely, <sighs> that was, lovely that oration. That was worth the price of admission. This is your life host. For, for, for Greg Weider. I am not done. Oh, I would shit. like to still talk about how he is a filthy Jew. Oh, okay, no, we no. don't need to get into that. No. Okay, all right, okay. Thank you, son of Stephen Hawking, for stopping by and helping celebrate Greg's 62nd birthday. 45. Okay, we've got more coming up, Greg. No. Do you... Yeah? Any, uh, any, any guesses as to who might be next? Well, if it's in, in your, uh, your catalog of characters, I really can't think of anyone else. No. I don't think there's anyone left. I think you've you've squeezed all the characters out that have that we've seen on the show anyway. That's that's correct, yes, Greg. Yeah, that's yeah. all you got. Right. Those are the only people here to celebrate yeah. your life. Uh all right. Okay, I guess we're wrapping up. All right, okay. guys, let's get out. Let's wrap up here uh, <laughs> and uh get out. All right, uh happy congrats, Basel, oh. Mazel uh, Tova or whatever it is you guys say. Thank have you. a good one, Greg. All right. All right! Wow, that was pretty cool. Well, that, that was, was a nice, wow. nice, uh, nice send off for you there, Greg. Look at that uh, a send off. Apparently, where am I being sent off to? I don't know. Heaven what, or what, oh. do you? Do, do Jews don't believe in heaven or hell, right? I don't know. I'm not really Jewish. I mean, have you seen your nose lately, or no? Well, actually, that's not true. When I cross my eyes, I can see it. Like I'm looking at it right now. Right. It's yeah. a beak. It's a it's yeah. A, no, it's a honker for sure. Well, thank you for the uh, the uh, this is your life episode. That was um, it took me back, yeah, and uh, really warmed my heart and uh, made me feel insecure and uh, foolish and mediocre. So I really appreciate that. Cool, yeah, that cool. Was really nice. You're welcome, man. Really nice. So what uh, what's on the big agenda for today? It is it is your birthday for reals. It is my birthday for reals. Episode thirty one. It's the birthday party, Imran. Oh, it's the big birthday party, man. What are we? I don't, okay, what are we doing? Are we like blowing balloons and shit? What's going on? Loot bags? Are we getting loot bags? You remember loot bags? Loot bags? That may be an Indian cultural thing, but we didn't get loot bags. Are you talking about gift bags? I was happy enough just to get a party growing up. I don't think we did much in the, uh, in the vicinity of loot bags. I'm sure my mom gave away little things. You know, I had a fire, fire engine party and... Hey, you know, fire engine party, surprise party. I mean, a, a you know, fire truck theme, fireman theme. I see. Yeah. Wow, that's a little homoerotic. Uh, well, we didn't have calendars and guys strippers coming in and dancing for <laughs> me. I was like four and adorable. Have you seen pictures of me? No, thank you. I uh, I was an adorable child. 
God knows what happened in the evolution of me. We've got a big show My, lined up. Big show. Big show. Big show. Big show. Are you ready for it or what? I mean, yeah, sure, I guess. I found out some news uh, yesterday. Oh? Man, you're, uh, you're cheating on the Wiener Shake Show. I, I'm what? Cheating on the Wiener? Uh, that's right. That's right. I am cheating on the Wiener Shake yeah, Show. Yeah, it was a bombshell. Uh, I told Tom Hanks and she couldn't believe it. She could. <laughs> she was well, more in I, shock than I was. I was I wasn't getting satisfaction. We know this. F- from from I wasn't being satisfied fully on the Wiener Shake Show. Mm-hmm. So I ha- I had to go look for it elsewhere, you know what I mean? Imran for those who don't know is uh working on a little side project. Uh, little he's side still project. fully committed, I'm assuming, to the Wiener Shake Show. Am I right, Imran? Oh, of course. Of course, 100%. 100%. But uh he's splintering well, off. Well, 90, 90 90% 90. 90. 91. 91. 91. I, I think we're in the 60s. Maybe 72. <laughs> generous, generous. <laughs> so what's this new podcast about? Please tell me. Well, what, what, I, what is so interesting that you can't get fulfillment from the Wiener Shake Show? Please tell us. The Wiener Shakers well, are on the edge of their seats. If you're comfortable talking about it, of course. I don't know if you have any press releases out or... No, no, no. Uh, my publicist, uh, my team hasn't really uh, assembled a packet, full package yet. It's called Legal Beagles, and uh, we sniff out the law. And it's basically me and uh, a, a lawyer, uh, and we talk about the law, and we talk about mo- – we have a structure, and you know, we go by uh, – we'll talk about a big case, uh, you know, national news case, or like an oddball case that no one's heard of, or – uh, or like a case from like the 1800s or something like that, and just talk about it, you know. And and the focus isn't really to be funny or anything like that. I mean, if there's some comedy that arises, so be it. But really, well, it's, you're a funny it's, person, so you know, it's funny is bound to happen typically. Fu- funny looking, <laughs> and so uh, so it's you know, um, and so it's just uh, it's it's two two geeks basically talking about geeking law. out about the law. Gotcha. And are you the host? Do you uh, run the thing? Yeah, I'm kind of. I'm kind of because you know I have no expertise in the law. I'm in the show. I say I'm a. I'm a armchair legal enthusiast, mm. and so mm. so I have. And all my information about the law comes from Law and Order. So so <laughs> I, by by default, you know, by default, I'm I'm the host, and I kind of guide the show as much as I can. And my my guest uh, Taylor, she. Uh, uh, she uh, Taylor. She's the lawyer. Yeah, she is a practicing lawyer. And uh, where'd she go to law school? Just, I don't want to say. Okay, we're figuring things out, but we there's a you know she she is a working practicing lawyer, uh, and she she works for a, a pretty noble company and uh, or firm or organization, I guess. Is she new? Is she just out of law school year two three? Uh, no, no, no. I think she's. I think in in the grand scheme of things, she is new, but she's not like fresh out of law school. Gotcha. No. And so, so mm-hmm. yeah. The point I'm getting, we we're protecting her identity good. and, and good, all good, that good. stuff because because she, you know, she has to give out a disclaimer that she, what she's saying is not legal, cannot be taken as legal advice and stuff like that. Oh, and wow. Uh, wow. Um, so, but but even beyond that, you know, just in case we say something sure. crazy or whatever, I don't want to jeopardize her actual. Of course not. Uh, are you fucking her? No, no, I'm not, Greg. Uh, okay, well, it's a reasonable question to ask. I didn't know if this Yikes. was an angle for you to get some, you know, regular poon. And you have told me <laughs> that most of your recent Tinder dates or Bumble dates have been lawyers. So uh, it's this, a reasonable this, this, connection for me to make. No? You know what? It, it is It is actually a reasonable yes. connection to make. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I, I, think, I think. So you are fucking yeah. her? Yeah. I'm not. No, I am not. I am not. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Uh, we we may or may not have been an item at one point, ah, but I, yes. I am neither confirming nor denying. But we are we are. That's uh, a yes. So yeah, we are we are, we are not. We I can say with much assurity that we are not currently, uh, nor have we currently been inside. I have not been inside her. But have, I, I, currently, actually, yeah, okay, currently. But you did bust off inside of her with a condom on. It didn't ask. I neither conform nor confirm conform. nor deny that. No, all right, all right. Well, uh, you know, when I heard that you were doing another podcast, and uh, you know, oh, I know, you know how it felt, right? Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. I I wanted to actually when I told you, 
uh, I wanted to I, actually say also like, but don't worry, I know how your mind thinks, and right, like right. I'm still doing the Wiener Shake Show because I knew, I knew, I knew, yeah. I I knew you, the the paranoia would go nuts in you. Well, it wasn't paranoia as much as uh, uh, well. This is the end. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess this is you're the four, end. I mean, this is what you're you really want to do. You're 45 years old. I'm 45 and, yeah. years old, and I'm being dumped by my yeah. uh, co-host for uh, a podcast that we've done 30 episodes for. Uh, younger. For. And younger. Yeah, young, no, of course. Younger. Well, and you told podcast. me through typical millennial communication in the typical millennial avoidance of confrontation by text. No, well, no, well, well okay, if we're getting into it. What really happened was I I told you I asked if the if Greg Wiener Productions could produce the show. Well, you asked that's, me to edit that, it. I didn't realize you wanted me to produce it. Well, Is that's that what, what I mean? mean. That's what you that, mean. I see. That's what I mean. You know, and like maybe maybe you could help with uh, imaging and stuff like that, depending hmm. on what we can work out. Obviously, because I want to pay the right. the yeah I want to pay the Greg Wiener uh, I want to pay Greg Wiener Productions and you for your time mm-hmm. and service. Mm-hmm. So you know that that's 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 you know that's why I texted. I don't know. Yeah, I guess, okay. I guess you have a fair fair point there. My preferred means of communication is texting. No, I know. I get it. I get it. It's just your nasally shrill Jew voice. It just grates on me. No, you prefer to text. It's easier and you it saves you time. I get it. It doesn't really save time. It does. I mean, you don't have to call. You don't have to have a conversation. You don't have to exchange niceties. Hey, how are you? Yeah. Oh, how's Tom? Uh, oh, how, are you away on vacation? Oh, uh, oh how's your, you know, you don't have to go through any of that. It's just, I say what I need to say. You respond. And it's on your terms. So you open yeah. up to a phone call and it's like, uh, now you're obligated for to fully communicate like people used to do. <laughs> so I get it. I, I say, listen, I'm a product of the millennials. I've been around that world enough. Everybody I deal with is a fucking millennial for the most part. So, uh, you know, I prefer texting now. You know, it, listen, I mean, yeah. look, I, I'm, I'm trying to be a little uh, modest here, but you're right. I mean, that's what it is. It's very efficient. Yeah, it's efficient. Of course it's it efficient. is. Of course it is. All right. Good. Which is the whole thing about millennials, isn't it? We're all about dehumanizing everything. Everything needs to be to the point. Every, we're, we're taking the human out of the equation in every single thing. And that and that's seen as progress and and, and technological progress. Mm. And I wonder if that's good. I don't think it is. I don't think you mean as far as you say connection, you mean the human interaction connection or human. You said the what did you say? (laughs) Taking the human out of the equation. I I, I feel like I I mean, in the sense that like Facebook and Twitter and Tesla and Uber, all these because Uber is an interesting case in particular, especially when it comes to labor. We're we're actually on on legal beagles where we're uh, one of the cases I want to talk about. If you say the name of your other podcast again. Sorry, I'm just. I, I listen. I'm a human being, okay. You're you're seeing another podcaster, and I just I get you know. Nine, 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 nine. I, and we're 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 in an open podcasting relationship. Well, baby. now we are apparently. You know, it, before it was just you and I, baby. We were slow dancing in the moonlight, holding each other at each other's hips like we did in eighth grade dinner dancing, and now it's you know every man for himself apparently. No, it's fine. I mean, it's, you know, it was you and me. We were alone in our own little podcast uh, dinner dance, slow dancing, our hands on each other's hips, safe distance apart, no dicks rubbing against each other, making each other laugh, and we're throwing our heads back and laughter, and I'm dipping you every once in a while, and... Greg Wiener Productions and Hollow Spirit Studios would like to thank Zcast.co for their constant support of the Wiener Shake Show since episode one. Thank you, Zcast. To find out more, go to Zcast.co. That's Zcast.co. Hey there, Wiener Shakers. This is your man, Flo Rowdy. Hey, what's happening? This is your home applies, man. Hey, yo, what's poppin', man? It's your boy, Bow Weezy, man. Check it out. To connect with the Wiener Shake Show. And your call. 302-RAW-DONG. That's 302-729-3664. And now, back to Greg Wiener and Enron Shake. And the Wiener Shake Show on the Greg Wiener Podcasting Network. I mean, we're talking running out of skin erection. I am 
recording. I am recording as well. Oh, good for you. Yeah. That's very nice. Very nice. Well, okay. Welcome back to the Wiener Shake Show. Welcome, welcome. Yeah. Take a seat. Have a seat. Take a load off. Why Take don't you? Take a load you? off. We have Nash here. We have Bagel Bites oh. because the budget is very low. They couldn't afford the they- entire bagel, so they bought two and broke it up into bits. Did you hear that? They've got bagel bites. No bad. Mm, no bad. bad. No Fat bad. free no cream bad. cheese, which is tasteless. It's like eating curd, water curd. Like, like paste, like eating a pa- paper mache. Okay. I mean, yeah, what, right. th- why did they even bother with it? It's disgusting. I mean, you're just wasting everybody's time if you, if you, if you, if you do. I mean, it's just, yeah. So we got a few things Very to get nice. to. Obviously, it's my birthday today. Yeah, man. Happy, uh, happy yeah. birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I greet this year with optimism and uh, hope. It's quite a nice. uh, difference from last year <laughs> where I spent my birthday in seclusion. I hid it from everyone, <laughs> avoided my family, and went to Chipotle for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I could just picture you rage eating a burrito that undoubtedly got screwed up. No, it was definitely not a well-made burrito, but I I sat and ate it because, you know what? I felt like I deserved to be alone on that birthday for some reason. I don't know. I didn't feel like celebrating it, so, you know. You know what was the the saddest, happiest birthday for me? It was in college. I was extremely depressed. Uh I was living in an attic, uh, which I loved. It was a great apartment. You know, when you go through depression, you get these bouts of euphoria, you know, like it's a surge. I don't know. Maybe you don't. I do. And it was... Uh, you may be bipolar, but go ahead. Uh, and uh, <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm a grizzly bear. Yeah. And I saw I, that the man who fell to earth was screening at the school. And in my mind, I was like, I'm going to treat myself. I'm going to take myself out and I'm going to go watch that movie. It's going to be a grand old birthday. And I remember that day, soup to nuts, very clearly, that night rather. I went to go see that movie, and it was exciting. It was fun. I was alone. It, you know, it was in a lecture hall, so it was kind of cool. It was like I'm I'm a part of the community. I'm doing a thing. Right. I saw I saw a girl who I had a crush on. I never found out if she was missing an arm or not. And uh, <laughs> I saw minute, her, but I saw. Up. Wait a minute. What? What? How did you not there know if a... she was missing an arm? Every time I saw this, it, well, I was in a class with this girl, and every time I ogled her, I her right arm was obscured in some way. To the point where I could not tell if she had if she was missing an armor. You never followed her and stalked her as you've been known to do. Never had the opportunity to because I pulled back because of my previous uh, uh, near misses with stalking. I tried to not be f- a full stalker. Smart, but I never found out. Now, interesting thing when when I saw her at uh, the Man Who Fell to Earth, mm-hmm. which is a great movie by the way, she was with a boy. And that was that was a little hurtful, but for some reason it didn't hurt me. It it kind of made me say, you know what? That's okay. I'm not going to let that affect me. I'm having a good old time. I I'm taking myself out. I'm having a me day. I'm not going to let it bother me. And it, it it didn't bother me. It didn't bother me, which was which was a step. I think it was a it was a I I had grown that year indeed. Good for you. Well, th- yeah, this year's been a year of ups and downs, but mostly ups, especially in the last six months. Yeah, you've been you've been on a tear. Uh, well, yeah, a little bit of a tear. Now I'm slowing down, but now I'm doing other things. So I went to Universal with my girlfriend. Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks. And we met her mom and uh, stepfather there and had a time. Ooh. We shared a hotel room together. With her mom and ste- ste- uh, with her parents? No, not with the parents. No, we had our own. No. <laughs> You guys are swingers no, they, with her parents. Uh, no. They were, they, they I'm were, not here to judge, bro. I'm not here to judge, bro. No, no. Uh, no, I would, I would not stand. I'm 45. I'm not going to stay in a room with my girlfriend and her parents. What are we, in high school, for Christ's sake? It did feel a little chaperonish, but they're fucking badasses. And we drank and laughed and had a fucking blast. It was a good time. But we went out and ate really good. And one of the meals was uh, at a place called Maggiano's, and they used a lot of garlic. So I'm back the fuck up, okay? And we're in one room, so I can't shit in the same room with her. 
<laughs> All right. So, so the, the nerves and anxiety of that. And I also, I, you know, it was backed up. I couldn't go even when I went to the public bathroom. So I didn't sleep for like two and a half days. Why? Because every time I started to fall asleep, I felt like this nasty, like three minute oh. fart coming on. And every time <laughs> I would feel it coming on, I would like hop up out of bed and she was knocked <laughs> out. So that was my night. I know she's heard me fart in my sleep, but if I can help it, I will not allow myself to fart in front of her. Why is that? Why is I, that? I don't know. I, I think it ha- it's some baggage from some old relationship. And it, because it's also, it's not attractive. It's fun no. if it yeah. pops out every once in a while and you're like, yeah, oh. it can be fun. But, yeah. you know, the th- type of sh- gas that I was holding, like, I would go outside <laughs> and I would walk around. I would crop dust for like a minute and a half. The best farts I've ever had are when I'm walking home late at night. Mm-hmm. No one's around. And you just let that shit, you just let it rip oh, yeah. in public, in the street. Yeah. And like, it's just like, you just feel like you got away with but it. But you know? aren't you worried that you're going to get caught? Because even where I was, I, I was blowing farts and it was like two in the morning, but I'm at a hotel. Oh. I'm at an outdoor hotel. So I figured, it, oh God, what if our parents are outside or something and they hear me? Oh, there have been the, there has been the rare instance where I'm like letting her rip and I've got my headphones on and I don't know how loud it is. And then I, like, look back instinctively, and there is someone right behind oh, me. And it's God. like, oh, God. Yeah. Oh, no. I'm that animal. Yeah. No, my, I, I know what you mean. Uh, Jane Doe and I, when we were together, one of the great fun joys and raucous moments we had, she was a gassy person. Uh-huh. And she was super embarrassed about it. Which is adorable. It's adorable when they get embarrassed about it, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It would get to the point. She literally farted on my face one time. Like I'm not. Oh. We were we were we were cuddling, and I was kind of laying on her hip. Uh, you know, she was laying on her side, and I was laying on her hip a little bit. And right. we were watching something. And she, it's uncontrollable for her. And and she, it 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 literally was like we we're sitting there watching, and it goes, and it's like, Boop. and then there was like a moment of silence. Yeah. Moment and of that, silence. In that moment, you're, you're, she was probably hoping you didn't hear it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, she, yeah. and her reaction, I will never forget her reaction. It was so, it was like, boop, beep, beep, beep. And then she goes, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, right. like inquisitically asking me like, what, uh, what? <laughs> yeah, did you say something? And then I was like, well, there was nothing to say. We all know what happened. And then right. she, go, she goes, what? And then and then she just started crying and she was just hysterically oh. embarrassed and she like ran away and I had to chase her and Adorable. To calm her down. And you tackled her and made love to her. I, I right? took her to the ground and I put my motor boated her ass. So I was at a Starbucks a couple days ago in Miami and Tom Hanks was with me Miami. and I ordered Oh yeah, Miami. And I'm on the Starbucks at Biscayne and 30th. You know, no problem letting this out because, again, I was a victim of racism. <laughs> I order a venti iced coffee, okay? And the, Did you say venti? Yeah, I said venti because if you don't, then they don't give you a venti. Yeah, why, what else would you want me to say? Large and buck the system? Is that what you no. want? I mean, I mean, that's, you know, you, 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 you've expressed anger before over these companies making you say words that are not American. I have? Yeah, you said that, like, they, the other place that you go to, the empanada place, they make you say grande or something like that for a lot, and you're just like, it just gives oh, me the Oh, no, fucking- they, don't, they don't understand. At, oh, at that place, they didn't understand English when I tried to order a large. So that was a whole language barrier there. No, they gave me a small fucking uh, cafe con leche, and I ordered a large, and I put my hands together like the size of a fucking dog to show them and to speak in a language, hopefully, that they could understand. But they still gave me a small fucking cafe con leche, and the empanada, as we know, was pure, unadulterated shit. Anyway, I actually, comparatively, now where I'm living, there's a place downstairs Great cafe con leche. Their larges are mediums and their empanadas have cheese in them. It's a crazy thing. So I'm at Starbucks and uh, I order a venti and I go, go get to the line where they give the, the drink. And it's a venti cup, but it's like three quarters of the way full. Ooh. And I look at the barista and I'm like, oh, hey, can, can you just top this off for me real quick? And she's like, well, you ordered a, you ordered a grande. And I'm like, no, 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 I ordered a venti. And she goes, well, you paid for a grande. Oh, 
And I'm, okay. I said, well, and then she takes my, say something. And then I was like, well, there was nothing to say. We all know what happened. And then she goes, she goes, what? And then, and then she just started crying and she was just hysterically Uh, embarrassed and she like ran away and I had to chase her and calm her down. And you tackled her and made love to her. I I took her to the ground and I put my motorboated her ass. So I was at a Starbucks a couple days ago in Miami, and Tom Hanks was with me, Miami. and I ordered, oh, yeah, Miami, and I'm on the Starbucks at Biscayne and 30th. I got no problem letting this out, because again, I was a victim of racism. <laughs> I order a venti iced coffee, okay? And the, Did you say venti? Yeah, I said venti, because if you don't, then they don't give you a venti. Yeah, why? what else would you want me to say, large and buck the system? Is that what you no. want? I mean, I mean, that's, you know, you've, you, you, you've expressed anger before over these companies making you say words that are not American. I have? Yeah, you said that, like, they, the other place that you go to, the empanada place, they make you say grande or something like that for a lot, and you're just like, it just gives oh, me the Oh, no, fucking- they, don't, they don't understand. Uh, oh, at that place, they didn't understand English when I tried to order a large. So that was a whole language barrier there. No, they gave me a small fucking uh, cafe con leche, and I ordered a large, and I put my hands together like the size of a fucking dog to show them and to speak in a language, hopefully, that they could understand. But they still gave me a small fucking cafe con leche, and the empanada, as we know, was pure, unadulterated shit. Anyway, I actually, comparably, now where I'm living, there's a place downstairs Great cafe con leche. Their larges are mediums and their empanadas have cheese in them. It's a crazy thing. So I'm at Starbucks and uh, I order a venti and I go, go get to the line where they give the, the drink. And it's a venti cup, but it's like three quarters of the way full. Ooh. And I look at the barista and I'm like, oh, hey, can, can you just top this off for me real quick? And she's like, well, you ordered a, you ordered a grande. Uh-oh. And I'm like, no, 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 I ordered a venti. Oh. And she goes, well, you paid for a grande. Oh, and I'm, okay. I said, well, and then she takes my cup back and she waddles on over to the cash register <laughs> and makes sure that, you know, I did in fact order a fucking grande. And, and she's like, okay. And she gives it back. She gives a cup back to the register girl. And, and the girl's like, she looks at me and rolls her eyes. And uh, she's like. I would have just given it to you because I was already looking at Tom Hanks like, can you fucking believe this racism? Because uh, the the barista. Uh, well, I'll get to that. So anyway, the cash register girl, uh, she says, I would have given I would have just poured in the rest. And I'm like, yeah, exactly. What are we talking to, about to you here? Or to, to the no, she said it to me because the head barista was a fucking bitch on wheels and loved her power and wielding it over the white Jew over here. Okay, so uh, Wait, she looks. Uh, what? Okay, okay. What? No, go ahead. What? Go ahead. Go ahead. No, yeah. No. What, what race was? What race was the head barista? The quote unquote bitch on wheels. African American. Oh, and the cashier. African American. Oh, oh, oh. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh-oh. So you Uh-oh. can tell the difference already. One <laughs> hates white people, and the other, who offered, who said she would have given me the rest, for free, loves white people. But every black person has a different perspective. Some have had bad experiences. Some have had good experiences. Some some people have come to terms with with the white black race relations in this country. And they have, you know, they've compartmentalized it in their head and moved on. You know, thank you. Uh, Thank you for not stereotyping by saying that some black people have different perspectives. That's that is what I just said. I know. I'm thanking you for that. Why? Are you, are you being seriously thanking me? No, of course not. I'm being sarcastic. Was that racist? Do you, so you identify that as racist? <laughs> I, I don't know. Continue. Okay, no. I will, admit, I will admit here that me thinking, okay, that because I'm white and this barista is black, that her shorting me on the coffee and charging me for it is racism. <laughs> That's racist. I admit that my head went right to race. And that's right. that's racist. That's okay? on you. 
That's on That's you. on me. I'm okay admitting my faults as a human. I grew up in this country. We've all got racism in us at some point. It's completely systemic and institutionalized in us as a country and people. Forget about it. But they need to be open about it, too. Who? Those people. No, listen, I don't put any expectations on black people. I can't begin to understand what they have been through. I'm not going to say you be nice to all white people. I can't say that. I don't know what each individual black person has experienced because that kind of racism. Because as as you've stated, as you've stated, they all have different perspectives. Each black person in this country has a different perspective, most likely. Although I think the greater common denominator is a shit perspective because they've been shit on so they're seeing it from a horrible fucking their perspective is horrible being followed everywhere they go if they're in a department store you know being being looked at and people walking across the street to be away from somebody who's black i mean like i can't begin to understand the fucking horror the day-to-day horror that that is i mean you walked in and that head barista she didn't see a customer. No. Nope. She, she didn't see a a, a, a a patron. She didn't see. No. Nope. She saw a slave owner. She saw a white his... devil. She saw she... a white devil. Oh, Lord, they go to white devil. You know, I had a friend that was moving into Harlem. White kid. Very white. <laughs> and he went, he, uh, he was, you know, sharing a place in Harlem. He was just out of college, moved up to New York. Yeah. And he goes into a bodega. <laughs> He walks in to buy whatever the fuck, and he walks in, and there's an older African-American male, a black male, older. As soon as he sees him, he goes, oh, Lord, there go the white devil. (laughs) Oh, Lord, there go the white devil. I mean, so, you know, I mean, these these (laughs) perspectives come from somewhere. I'm not this this blind racist. No, you're not. You're not. I can see very well. I can see the racism around me and within, and I hate it. So that's why a lot of this show is about race, I think. Anyway, so, Cause, yeah. Because you, uh, you, was... you, you want to you wanna propagate this hate. Uh, what's propagating? You want, you want to promote it. You want... No. You, wa- you, you, know, want... Yeah, you know I'm not trying to promote hate. Imran. You want a group of people... You know I'm not trying to promote hate. You know I am coming at this from a very honest... Very um, white uh, self-realization supreme uh, perspective and very white. Absolutely. Ideology. Don't say ideology. You know what that that invokes in people. Come on. I'm just. okay. Hmm. You play your games. I'm just saying. You play your games. You play your camel games. You know. (laughs) Yeah, I'm just. (laughs) Camel games starring Imran Sheikh. Camel games. Greg (laughs) Wiener. So. Is the uh, Starbucks barista, was she racist? This is your question. No, of course not. She wasn't racist. How do you know that? How do you know that? Because there was nothing about your race that made her angry towards you. She thought you were another Jew coming in, trying to skimp on some money and got a little bit extra. I ordered. I Hey, listen, it's not my fault that the cashier put down Grande. Okay. No, it's not. But I ordered venti. She thought you were trying to get one over on the Starbucks Corporation, and she was defending her employer. Yeah, why? Like Starbucks Corporation gives a shit about her and her bottom line. Yeah, they do. Starbucks no, is they actually like one of the top companies to work for. Are they? Why? Because they send all their employees to an online college. Big fucking whoop. Oh, let's regale Starbucks Corporation. Meanwhile, I pumped like fifteen, twenty dollars into them once a week, a week, not once a week, a week. No, I don't. I don't think she was being racist. I think she saw a cheap Jew trying to scam the system again. I wasn't trying to scam the system, but I'm telling you, I recognize. You know, we've we've spoken before. I am an incredibly powerful empath, huge and empath, yeah, highly sensitive. Uh, dare I say I'm, I'm, uh, a, a, a psychic, uh, right. the way I can read people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I should can, play yeah. professional poker because I know in, in seconds, a look, a blink, a turn of a head, uh, a pursing of the lips. I see it all, baby. I see it all. I've seen it before and I feel it. No, it's incredible. So sometimes when, and listen, I had a black a homeless man spit mm. on my car 
because I ignored him and didn't give him 25 cents. He spit on my car. And I saw the same black fella again in front of the 7-Eleven. And I ignored him again. And the hatred that he looked at me with, Imran, mm. I mean, it was mm. fucking blood chilling. It, it well, chilled the blood. To be fair. So I see this hatred and I recognize it. And I saw it in the Starbucks barista. Suck it. Lie, 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 lie. Good. That's an appropriate audio file to play right after that. <laughs> to be fair, in this homeless man's defense, if I saw you driving around in your fancy pants sports car, I would probably spit on it and you as well. And I know you. And I like you, dare I say. Yeah, my name is Greg Wiener. I'm an actor. You've you flaunted your car to me on several occasions. There was no I mean, flaunting. I don't flaunt anything. You texted me a picture of the car on more than one occasion. And the first time you texted it, you texted it by saying, oh, oops, sorry, <laughs> wrong text. And you know I'm living in a hobby. I do you, not you know, know that. You don't share anything you know. personal with me. And then you send me photos of your grand vista from your high-rise apartment, you know, pie in the sky finally made it you know the jefferson's tower oh yeah sure you finally got a piece of the pie moving on up yeah. you send me this gorgeous vista photo from your balcony and meanwhile you know you know what vista i've got a, a, a broken blind that i can't use that looks out onto the onto the trash can why are you comparing yourself to me it's almost as if you're, you're competing the one comparing with me. me to you that is you're, you're the one who's comparing me to you by sending me photos not at all of your luxuries of your riches i'm sharing yeah but because you see it that way because you are competing with me which i didn't know until now because i share things with people when i'm happy okay and I wanted to share, listen, there's not a malicious bone in my body. I will hold my hand to God right now and say that until the fucking, uh, I meet my maker. There is not, there is no malice in me whatsoever. What does that mean? What does that mean? Till I meet my maker. So like, as soon as you meet God, it's going to be like, all right, time to shit on people. Fuck that guy. Fuck this guy. <laughs> no, it's, it's God is my witness. It's the, the meet your maker thing. I don't know. I, I, I don't process these things before they come out of my mouth. Imran. Exactly. Exactly. Because you're so high up on your privileged horse. Oh my God. That you can't, you can't, you can't. Let Ladies and gentlemen, you, you don't know Imran. You don't know what it's like. You don't know what it's like to scrounge for. for food. Are you fucking you, you kidding don't... me? Do you know how much shit I ate in New York, close to where you live now, my f- fucking friend? You have no idea the shit I ate in L.A., the shit I ate in New York. Yes, I've had to scrounge. Yes, I've been starving and living in that stupid mm. fucking mm. city many times. Mm. My mm. my caviar. Dark, the ca- dark skin the ca- friend. Instead of caviar, ladies and gentlemen, Greg had to eat roe. I don't, That's I don't know his what starving. roe is, and, and neither do most of the people listening to the show. I had to eat roe. <laughs> oh, and I loved, I loved your, your dropping the French term for resume last uh, episode in 30 when you were talking to Duckman. Well, I shouldn't say talking to him. You were... <laughs> I was reporting. I you was were... <laughs> reporting. I was observing and reporting. I was not doing anything outside. Hey, by the way, uh, speaking of listener feedback, uh, you have some listener feedback. Do you want to go through that now? Oh, yes. Uh, a new message uh, from from Eddie K. Eddie K. writes in saying, Hey, what's up, my Nia? Shout out. Just wanted to shout out. Just wanted to shout. Right. He was clearly trying to say the N word, but chickened out at the last Mm -hmm. second. Just wanted to shout out my boy, Dick Jones. He's the best part of the show. I hope the sickle cell tremors are going easy on him today and that his Nestle flips game is on point too. Dick, don't let that camel get you down, man. He likes to push everybody's buttons Mm. because he's insecure. You and Greg make a great show. Yo boy, Eddie K. It's Dick Jones. Dick, 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 Dick. It's Dick Jones. That's a good smell of pocket. Dick, 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 Dick. That's a gross mama. 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 Pocket break. It's Dick Jones on the Wiener Shake Show. Hi, I'm Ray. Hey, Dick. How you doing? I'm all right. Do you like your intro? Do you like your It's all uh, right, man. I think, I think Greg could go back into the studio and work on it and tighten it up a bit. But I'll take you for now. <laughs> Shit. Grateful. Thanks, Dick. So, so Dick, you, you undoubtedly heard uh, the viewer uh, feedback there. 
Uh, I responded. Uh, I'll be. Uh, let me send a shout out to Eddie Kedison. Shout out to Eddie K. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and then, so we responded as the Wiener Shake Show responded. What you say? Dick Jones literally can't reply mm-hmm. to you because his fingers are too fat to operate a phone, let alone type on one. You dirty motherfucker. Ah, uh, well, Dick. Dick. No, man. Why he got to speak for me and then he he gonna mock me? Dick. In my shake. Oh, you did call me a racial slur there. My motherfucker. I mean, Dick, can you operate a phone? Can you operate a phone? Yes yeah, or no? I can operate a phone. I, my Siri understand every goddamn word I say. No, no, I'm not talking about Siri. I'm talking about using the keyboard. Can you type on your phone? Man, I don't need to, man. Now, what if you had to, man? I probably could, my fan. Man, you a fattest, you know that? You got nothing okay. mean, nice to say to me, and all of it is this animus and this, you attack my weight. When I got a thyroid issue, and the sickle cell, and the diabetes. Listen, listen. Oh, motherfucker. Hey, 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 hey. Dick, Dick. relax. Relax, Dick. No, man, you know, great, great. You ate that whole empanada, you didn't even save enough for me. Because your sugar was high this morning. Yeah. Oh, pfft. You're right. Um, listen, Dick, it's Greg's birthday. Well, happy birthday. Let's... Whoa, whoa, Jesus Dick. Christ, Dick! What's your fucking Dick, problem? Dick, he's 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 giving you lodging. He's putting a roof over your man. head. He's giving you flips. Yeah. Come on, no, man. he ain't giving me flips in a week and a half, him Ryan. Ooh. This motherfucker Chinson, and I know he just got paid from one of his jobs. How do you know that? How do you? Because I I went through your bag when you was in the bathroom taking that shit you've been waiting to take all weekend. <laughs> you know you're getting a little too big for your fucking britches, Dick. Okay, what you gonna do? Yeah, I mean. <laughs> He's right. I mean, I can't move him. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm a big motherfucker. You, you won't have to get a forklift in here to get me out of here. <laughs> uh, maybe a little gratitude, Dick. I'll be grateful when you feed me. All right. Bye. Fair. Okay. Bye. Fair. But <laughs> so another fan Dick likes Dick everybody. Jones. I don't know, Imran. I mean, I mean the you know. What do we do? As you know, our phones have been ringing off the hook. <laughs> Uh, yeah. We're getting message after me- emails, uh, text messages. Uh, women, We've had wi- fifteen already since we recorded. Wi- wi- women have been literally like taking their shirts off and just images of Dick Jones, mm-hmm. you know, on their on their boobs. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, he's a popular popular character. He is he's popular. popular. We we kind of have to put up with him, but he's he's uh, he seems to be evolving into something that's uh, <laughs> not as sweet as he once was. He, I mean, I think this you is know, what the... I hear every damn word y'all are saying. Dick, please, oh, oh. can you let us? We we know Imran gets what? a little he gets a little uh, fussy when you again when you dominate. We know this. Yeah, I'm gonna address that in the next episode, but I'm gonna go. I'm going to go over here now. Whoop. <laughs> He's going to address it in the next episode, Imran. <laughs> but he had pressing matters yeah. uh, somewhere, else, somewhere else within the well, Imran. That's right, Camel. i got other things to do. i got to answer this fan letter. Well, well, what? What do you mean you got to answer this fan? Who's sending you fan letters? i got to log in the way you get them messages, boy. And let me tell you something. I'm gonna write that Eddie Kennison back and let him know that you were done forged into the bank account, into the um, into the messages, and that you spoke for me when you wasn't allowed to speak to me. Listen, okay. Hey, don't get don't get sad. Don't I'm get sad, get sad Dick sad. Jones. I just ran out of breath. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes it's hard for me to breathe in, Ryan. You know this. Yeah, because you need to work out. Anyway, anyway, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah goodbye, Dick. This is this is the Dick Jones trap. Dick Jones, you're welcome to stay. But we're, you're not going to hijack the show. We're not going to. We're not going to okay. talk about your many, many medical maladies. Yeah, that's real nice, man. And don't even get me started on your medical maladies, Imran. Oh, go ahead, please, please. Let's no, let's share. Just make sure your diapers is empty. All right. When that RBS come up on you. <laughs> <laughs> Found that funny, no, huh? How'd it count? <laughs> no, that's great. He laughing at it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't laughing. I'm just looking at you. I'm staring at you, Imran. He is. He's got this weird look in his eye. All right, Dick, please. We've got other shit to get to. All right, Greg Wiener. <laughs> so, Imran, have you heard about this guy? Uh, yes. First of all, have you ever heard of Dolly the Dolphin? The, who? Dolly the Dolphin. No. Okay. Well, have you heard of <laughs> uh, uh, Malcolm Brenner? <laughs> no. Uh, no. Who are okay, these? good. All right. It's- 
is this is this your version of the here's your life bit? <laughs> I'm like, what, what is going on? I'm like, what? Imran, have you heard of Dolly the Dolphin? No, 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 I haven't. What about Marcus Brenner? Nope, no, no. no. <laughs> okay, so uh, apparently th- th- this documentary came out in 2015, but I never heard about it. Tom Hanks told me about it, uh-huh. and I was like, "You got to be fucking kidding me!" Okay, this man, Mark Brenner, fell in love with Dolly the Dolphin. <gasps> They did a documentary, <laughs> and I happen to have it here. I wanted desperately to be normal, to have a relationship with a woman with Dolly the Dolphin. I first realized I was sexually attracted to animals when my father took me to see a Walt Disney movie called The Shaggy Dog, and strangely enough, I found myself getting an erection at five years old. After that, I was aware that there was something different about my sexuality. I first discovered Florida Land as a tourist. It's the porpoise pool, and what a great playmate he's found. The dolphin show entailed a lot of things that you don't see in dolphin shows anymore. Like dolphins wearing floppy hats or dressing up in hula hoops. I was asked by a woman writer to take some photographs to illustrate a book that she was going to write about the dolphins. We were standing on the dock looking down at this dolphin. She stared up at us and we stared down at her and the writer said, This is Dolly. Malcolm meet Dolly. Dolly meet Malcolm. There were no intimations that this dolphin and I would become lovers eventually. I was fascinated. I'd never... There was no intonation that me and this dolphin would become lovers eventually. What do you think so far? Is it interesting? I I have, and he looks like a creep, right? He looks, he looks like he's like a sex offender, right? And you couldn't believe it when I started talking about it, right? It I, sounds like an SNL sketch. It's it sounds like a a, a joke. No, but this is yeah. real. This is real. Been that close to a dolphin before. I slipped into the water with her. She wouldn't come anywhere near me, of course. Dolphins are usually suspicious of strange people. She stayed on the other side of the pen. (laughs) And then the assistant trainer uh, began urging me to swim out, to to take the first move, you know, to be bold, you know. So I struck out to the middle of the pen. Wait, 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 wait. He was working at at this aquarium. Yeah, he was taking pictures at this aquarium at a place called Florida Land, which I don't think exists anymore. And they sent him out to swim with the dolphin, I think, just to be like, hey, you like dolphins? They didn't know he was going to fuck her. (laughs) You know, they they don't know that him watching a Disney movie about a dog as a kid gave him a boner at five years old, which I don't even know if that's possible. Is that possible? No, kids, uh, uh, children, like, start masturbating at, like, two, three years old. Oh, no, right. So that's what I was saying. So it's possible for him to get a boner at five, right? Do they get bones? I don't think they get bones. Ah, I don't know. I don't want to talk about little boys' boners anymore. It's gross. (laughs) This is gross enough. All right. Let's continue. And sort of chased her around for a while. And finally, (laughs) uh, we ended up in the shallows. Very slowly, she (laughs) came to the point where I could reach out and touch her. I started rubbing her forehead. She seemed to enjoy that. I started rubbing her along her back and working my way towards her her flukes, her tail. And as I was rubbing her and moving my hand towards her tail, Dolly was slowly rolling around her long axis so that by the time that I got midway down her body, I was rubbing her belly instead of rubbing her back. And she swam forward a little bit so that I was rubbing her genital slit. No, 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 no. no. Yeah. No, no, no. Genital slit. No, 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 no. Yeah. Go on, continue, yeah. continue, continue. And she stopped moving. And I thought, oh, this is embarrassing. I just didn't think that that was the kind of show that, uh, you know, parents would be bringing their kids to Florida land to see. She was at the time. The- <laughs> you, really, it, it struck you at that point that this wouldn't be something that the kids at Florida land would be paying admission for. You fucking weirdo. Only dolphin outside of the U.S. Navy that was trained to work in open water. Her part of the show was to swim along with a riverboat. It was a really uh, incredible performance. Whoa, wait, wait, back up, back the... up. So he just continued to rub her genital slit? Yes, her genital <laughs> slit. I think this was like, uh, it, this was in the open where people could watch uh, or were uh, spectating. And, you know, they probably couldn't see that he was <laughs> rubbing her genital slit. I mean, where did this guy learn to fucking talk about female body parts? <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right, Bobby. All right, Marcus. The vagina is called the genital slit. Oh, who's... If you call it anything else, it's gauche. Who's, who's this? I, I, I... I don't know. His teacher. I mean, who teaches this person to say genital slit instead of, you know, pussy or vagina? Like, I guess he can't say dolphin pussy or dolphin kind. Dolphin pu- No, that's pillow talk. <laughs> that's pillow talk, yeah. Water with her. She would approach me. 
unafraid. She would solicit attention. I never fed the her. Music. I never gave her oh, any no. kind of food reward. Her courtship, as it progressed, got more vigorous and intense. She would rub her genitals slit against me, and if I tried to uh, push her away, she would get very angry with me. One time when she wanted to masturbate on my foot and I wouldn't let her, she threw herself on top of me and pushed me down to the 12-foot bottom of the pool. Those were the tactics that she was trying on me at first. Eventually, she seemed to get the message that that wasn't going to work. Yeah, Dolly the Brassy Dolphin won't take no for an answer. <laughs> Dolly, I like how Dolly was the one who was pursuing this. <laughs> the dolphin. Oh, I was just, I was just minding my own business, taking photos of dolphins. This dolphin is the one who came on. I mean, you know, but Your it's Honor. this. <laughs> I think is based in fact that dolphins are aggressive sexually to humans sometimes. They are male dolphins have been known to like pop their junk out. There is there is a huge marine problem with roving male, uh, roving teen male dolphins. Going around the oceans, raping dolphins. This is a this is an actual problem. Well, maybe that's why Tyra Banks is so scared of dolphins. She's got this uh, horrible phobia of dolphins, so maybe she heard about dolphin rape. Really? I used to jerk off to her. Okay, it's good, Nimrod. Yeah, I'm just saying. An- anyone else you used to jerk off to? Um, I mean, how long? How long do we have? Any dolphins get your peak your uh, <laughs> fancy at all? Sequest DSV. No, no. No, dolphins have never no. turned me on. <laughs> me either. Although... You, oh, well, no, no, no. You know, if you watch the video... Go ahead. Watch the video. And there's an artist rendering <laughs> of the different positions they get into. Oh, I have to... Because obviously there's no footage of this guy fucking Dolly the dolphin. But there's artist renderings. I mean, the the picture of the dolphin's vagina... It's massive. It's like, uh, it looks like right. an elephant vagina, right? Right. I, I can imagine. And I cannot imagine it's physically pleasurable to be inside a dolphin's vagine. Um, it's got to mash your dong up. I would think so too. Right? Because they're I, strong animals. They're like pure muscle. Yeah. Like that's, I've never touched a dolphin, but I remember like uh, uh, hearing that when you like touch a dolphin, you can just feel the fucking power like that they have. Like you can just. They kill sharks. They're so powerful. They premeditatedly kill orcas they know they figured out a way how to subdue and incapacitate orcas in gangs and kill them dolphins are fucked they don't fuck around so he puts his penis inside the dolphin yes he not only did that he fell in love with the dolphin and the dolphin <laughs> fell in love with him well of course he's not a he's not a rapist he's not a oh, no. sexual predator i mean this is a, a, he wouldn't just force himself upon a dolphin no of course not no no all right Listen. successfully made love with dolly the last visit to the park that i made the park had been closed down the property had been sold off the whole thing was going to be developed into a housing complex all the dolphins had been shipped out except for Dolly and one male dolphin. Uh, they were in a pool together. Uh, I went down to the park that day without any real idea whether I was going to be able to make love to her or not, uh-huh. but just hoping that that would happen. We started a very long courtship that lasted about half an hour. Frankly, it was a little <laughs> difficult to make love with her. There's no backstop in the water. It's a f- you don't say, huh, Marcus? <laughs> Frankly, it was a little difficult to make love with her. Shameless environment. She was very cooperative. She was very gentle. Oh. She was enormously oh. erotic. We played games. Right. We had to what? try several different positions before we found one that worked, which was her floating horizontal in the water and me being vertical, coming into her from the side that way. And that seemed to work a whole lot better because I could hold onto her back with one hand and hold and guide my penis with the other hand so I didn't slip out of her. Because uh, oh. of the fact that they live in the water, the female dolphins' uh, internal genitalia is a little more complicated than a woman's. Really? They have some. Oh, yeah. Really? God, this guy's got pearls of wisdom for us. I, I have a feeling he doesn't know what a woman's <laughs> vagina feels like. <laughs> I'm just going to go out on a limb here. Interesting. You said the same thing, or I think you would say the same thing about um, Fuckless Boy. Uh, uh, yes. Is this a surprise? Is this Fuckless Boy that we're... Is that him? Is this his real identity? No, this is definitely not Fuckless Boy. Come on. Fuckless Boy would never fuck a dolphin. We, I mean, the man The man wants to be called Duck Man, so... Yeah, yeah I mean, you got a point there. Waterproofing features in there that you might describe as valves, almost. As we started making love, I felt this... Just intense uh, sense of merging with her on every level. 
emotionally, mentally, oh, physically. Sure. Mentally, of course. Yeah. Spiritually. Mentally, yeah. of course. It's really like we stopped Spirit. being two individual creatures yeah. and became one creature. Yeah. That's what happens when you're dicks in another living, breathing <laughs> life form, my friend. It's as if you're one. I mean, it's it's when I when I have had sex with human women before, I, I have not experienced that, which is a real thing. I have done sex with a human woman. I just want to be clear. Yeah. But when I had sex with Dolly the dolphin, it was uh, a union was of a union. two souls. Yeah. I never connected with women when I had sex with them. not like Dolly the dolphin. No, I never I never found a connection with no. human women who with whom I have had real actual sex <laughs> with. I've never experienced such. Intense intimacy. Yeah. And dare I say after this, you will never experience any kind of intimacy ever again, my friend. <laughs> With anyone. Okay. It felt transcendental. It's a big word for somebody who fucks dolphins. It felt cosmic. As I climaxed... Oh, gross. Dolly groaned. Oh. Oh, Dolly groaned, he said. As he climaxed, Dolly groaned. Can I just say, yeah. even when having sex with dolphins... Men are still selfish lovers. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, you know, you got a point. I mean, we're all just, e even when it's outside yeah. the species. Yeah. We're all we're essentially selfish. masturbating inside of you. That's all we do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She made a series of three groans in a rising no. cadence. And that led me to believe that she had also experienced an orgasm. She faked it. No, she, and she wanted to get that this weird human out of her. They're they're highly intelligent dolphins. She's like, all right, if I just I go e e e three times and I scoot him out of me, he'll fucking leave me alone. This weirdo. I pulled out of her and uh, yeah. swam over to the wire fence that encircled the pool. And Dolly swam up to me. She laid her snout on my shoulder. Sure, she did. She embraced me with her flippers. Mm -hmm. And we just stared no, into okay. each other's eyes for a couple of minutes. No, you didn't. No, no. That's physically not. No, that's physically not. But that's. I. I have no words. No. I, have no no. I have no words. I have no words. So, yeah. I just wanted to share that with you, Imran. This. This is a gift. That. Happy birthday to you. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you. This is a gift, not just to me, but all humankind. <laughs> this guy should be in jail. Why is he uh, not in prison? He. Uh, I don't know. I think he is. He should be. I agree. And it's against the law. He went into like, there's this whole bit about uh, zoophilia and how it's different from bestiality. Bestiality, the humans only want to just fuck the, the animals and leave them. But zoophilia is when you fall in love and respect the animal oh, you're right. raping. <laughs> Essentially. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, God. Humankind. So if you're ever feeling down about yourself and you think, oh, I'm a little perverted, I'm a little dumb, I'm a little sick in the head, I'm lonely, just thank Christ that you're not Malcolm Brenner. I think we should stop. I mean, my dick's so flaccid right now, I don't think I'm ever going to be able to get hard again. I And you got to go jerk off. My dick literally... Popped off my body, went, <laughs> popped off my body. And